Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to part two of me chatting about my fountain pen collection. Uh, to put this into context, what I'm doing is using some of my extra time to do a complete inventory of all my fountain pens. And part one was all my Gen Howes. That was 31 pens. And included in there were several of the 599s that were dollar pens. But still, I wanted to, to be fair, I wanted to tally every single pen, look at them and inventory them. And at the end of that video, Video. that was the first part I showed you on Google Docs how I'm doing it and it's really kind of fun it really is so with this second part I decided to just do my Lamy's and my Twisby's so and we're looking at 18 pens today. We're looking at five Lamy's and 13 Twisby's and then on part three it'll be all of the unique uh, pens where I only have maybe two um, or one of a, of a kind many one of a kinds and some that I have two uh, and I can think of at least one where I have three. So anyway, that's um, that's what I'm doing. My overall purpose is that I feel like with a hundred pens I have too many, but I, I am being very mindful of how I proceed and um, really taking notes and learning what it is I like about the pens I have and what I don't like or you know where my little uh, uh, holes are in the collection if there are any and where my excesses are. And you saw that. <laughs> you definitely saw a lot of that on the last video. But let's just get right into it. So the first one of all of these that I got was the Lamy uh, Vista, which I just absolutely love. And it's a workhorse. Um, it has been in nearly every uh, ink video, ink review in recent times anyway. When I first started, I was just using a broad nib serendipity pen, but then a viewer suggested a me, uh, that I, you know, use a fine nib and someone else suggested a broad nib. These were all perfectly, absolutely uh, necessary suggestions. I was just so new to doing it. But so you've seen this pen a lot and it's inked up right now with a with the beautiful uh, Kobe number 41. But what I really love about these Lamy's is the interchangeable nibs. Um, and believe me, it's musical nibs around here on these pens. Right now it's got the broad nib. For a long, long time it, it had the fine nib on it. Um, but I just really wanted to see that beautiful magenta ink uh, coming out of a broad nib. So this was the very first one I got. And then next, um, with the Lamy's, I got this beautiful purple um, Lamy Safari dark lilac and at the time I got it it was I had to pay just a little bit more for it um, can't remember exactly when I bought it but I know that uh, it was a limited edition and I learned my first lesson about you know um, if you if it's your favorite color and you're gonna want it to get it if you can at all I have the the stub nib on it right now but it isn't inked up which is very rare it's because I'm trying to give a chance to some of the other pens that haven't been and I'm also using fewer at a time right now so this is just it's gorgeous it's purple it's got that finish that isn't the glossy finish it's a I'm not sure if they call it matte or there's probably a technical term I'm not thinking of hopefully I'll be able to find that when I start typing in the description but I do love this one it's got the black clip and uh, just gorgeous and again these feel so versatile because I can just switch the nibs willy-nilly and right now um, it's very telling I think that my two medium Lamy nibs are in the garage they're you know they're not as used I really gravitate toward broad and fine in this um, in the Lamy safaris I do have a medium on this one though and so that means somehow or another I accumulated three medium nibs. Um, I know that the nib I purchased separately was the broad nib, which is now on the Vista. So, but this is the charcoal one, and I, I love this one. This is really nice for black or gray because of me being one of the, those people that likes to match or, you know, come pretty close with ink colors. And then this is my only Lamy All-Star. It is the vibrant pink, and it's got that uh, nice clear, or not, well, not clear, but um, uh, demonstrator section. They all have the same uh, grip section, the triangle. Uh, it's a forced grip, but it, it happens to work perfectly for me. Fine nib on there. Um, I don't know. 
I like this pen a lot. It's gorgeous, but for some reason I'm afraid of scratching it. So I'm a little more like uh, nervous about it, but I haven't had it long enough. I don't think to really know. I picked it up kind of late in the game um, on sale for $20 and I was really excited about that. Okay, and then this is the Lamy Nex. Oh, I meant to look up what the color is. And I want to say emerald, but I'm not sure. So um, what I love about this pen is not actually its looks, but I just love the, um, the section is just a little bit different, the grip section. So it's, uh, it's still a contoured, suggested, uh, and uh, you could say forced um, grip section, but it's just super comfortable. It's kind of rubbery. And it, and it grips, not that these aren't, these are excellent, but this has got more diameter to it by at least a little bit. And it's just super comfortable. This has a fine nib on it. Um, I'm not as excited about the looks of this one as I am uh, the Safaris. And the grip section is not that much different, but it, it is neat on that one how it has the rubber. So I'm super glad I got it because it's just an excellent note taker. These all are though. So those are my five Lamy's. I love them and they, the nibs interchange among all, all five of them perfectly well. So I think we'll move them aside because we're going to get really uh, busy here in a minute with the Twisbees. So I had forgotten the Twisby Mini. I had it, I had to put it up there for the Glamour Shop because I forgot that it was attached to my bullet journal. Well, I don't know that I forgot it was there. I forgot to put it in the group, the group photo. So I didn't want it to be missing. So I... Let's see, order-wise, certainly among what's here, the first one I got was the clear Twisby Eco. And I did that on purpose because at the time, um, certainly I, I wasn't desensitized yet to paying $30 for a pen. And I thought, I'm going to be smart. I'm going to get clear and any color ink will go in this. And, and that's true. You know, it will. And I, I do use it that way. So it's wonderful. I got a medium nib on it. Um, I love the grip section on here. It's got just a little bit of contour and it's very comfortable for long writing sessions. I've done full reviews on most of these pens. Um, definitely have, have gone in and talked a lot about this one. I'll have to link that for you. So that was the first one. And then I know that it wasn't long after before I decided to try the Twisby Mini, which is inked up with the beautiful uh, Graf Von Faber Castile Stone Gray. And it's a workhorse in my bullet journal. And I love how it's kind of small, but yet it posts to be full sized. I've said that many, many times. <laughs> um, it's got the, it's the Twisby Mini AL. So it's got that uh, silver section, aluminum. Oh, I hope this is focusing. Got pretty good light today. It's a nice day. And again, this was in my medium nib phase. So um, I, I did that. I got I wasn't really exploring with nibs in the beginning. So if, if I were to give any advice, it would be kind of, um, you know, slow down just a little. If you think that medium or fine is your, your only nib you're ever going to want, it could change. And with the Twisby Mini and the Twisby Diamond 580, you can easily swap the nib units. It'll cost you some money to buy the, that replacement nib unit, but it just uh, comes right off, screws on and off. So I'm, I'm happy about that because I am considering um, getting some replacement nibs. Now, next was this one. <clears throat> I may forget some of the order in here, but I wanted to show you as much as I could. And this is the Twisby Diamond 580 AL, or all. Um, and it's just a gorgeous pen. It's, it's um, now, for a while, I didn't write with these two as much, with the Diamond 580s, because I felt they were slippery. But I'm not feeling that anymore. I'm just, I'm not feeling that way at all. Uh, however, I will still say that if I'm just going to do a ton of writing, just, just a ton of it, then I still will reach for the Eco or the Go first. Um, and and I, I don't anymore think it's about slipperiness. It's just about overall comfort. But I just love the ink capacity on these. And um, I have really controlled myself because they came out with a purple one and I didn't get that. This is the Rose. And I love this. I bought this specifically. Actually, I wasn't going to, but it was another one where Manuel said, please order it, get it. And it's from him. And I put in the... Um, I love to put Noodler's uh, Black Swan and Australian Roses in this one because that's one of my favorite inks. But everything you see so far, 
all medium nibs. And if I had that to do over again, I, I wouldn't. I would get at least one broad nib. And because now I know how much I love the Twisby stub nibs, I would really want to share the love and get a different, you know, get at least one of each. But that's just lessons learned. And, and as far as the, the Twisbys, I haven't gone too far over the, <laughs> over the cliff. But, uh, okay, we might as well talk about these. I've got the little cheat sheet because some of these are repeated colors and I wanted to remember what the nib size is. These are the Twisby Goes, which I have a full review of. And this one has the Lexington Gray in it right now. It's the clear one. I just, these are super comfortable. But the other thing I super, super love about these is they're so super quick. There goes that word again, super. They're very quick and easy to clean and fill. I mean, it's, it's super, it's very fast. Oh my goodness, where's that word coming from? I just can't stop it. So that's the fine nib. And then I got the clear one in a broad nib because I really love that. And uh, let's see, <laughs> what do I have in here? Okay, I, I believe this is the uh, Straits Pen Honest Ink Bougainvillea Purple in here. And uh, I just write with these every day, all the time, I love them. So I've got three of them inked up. And then another broad nib in the sapphire color, because there's only three colors out, clear, sapphire, and smoke. Someone is very busy on a very noisy project in the kitchen. But anyway, this is the uh, the third one, the Twisby Go with a broad nib. And it's got Lamy Vibrant Pink in it right now. And I'm loving that in the broad nib. These two are empty right now. Very rare. Um, this has a medium nib and it's the sapphire. And this one is the smoke with the Twisby 1.1 um, stub, which is very smooth. And I'm loving it. I'm really loving it. So let's see, we'll move these aside here and we will talk about the rest of the Ecos. I'll bring back the, <laughs> the buddy. We don't want him to feel lonely. Okay, so what's left are the Twisby Ecos. And two of these are very recent acquisitions. The uh, rose gold, the white rose gold and the yellow was just this week. I, I couldn't take it. I had to have one. So um, we already talked about the, the uh, medium nib on this clear eco. And then this is the beautiful uh, new release, the yellow one. And I got a broad nib on it. And I'm actually considering to go with Golden Gazette from Birmingham for the first fill. I, you know, it, it's, I don't have very much of that left and I don't think I'll be able to get more, but I thought I'd enjoy it. And I, uh, Birmingham inks are so well behaved. So that's the plan. And then um, this is the one that I just got the replacement nib in from Twisby. This is the transparent blue eco with what they called a broad nib. And looking at the broad nib they sent, it does look a lot broader than what came on it. So that's going to require a lot of um, courage on my part because I have never uh, swapped a nib on a Twisby. And I know, I just know from what I've read that, oh, this has the Kianit du Nupal in it, uh, the J. Arbon. I know that these feeds are very uh, delicate, so it's scary the thought of doing that, but I'm going to do it. I'm just not sure when because it took me a long time to even do that project on a Gen Hao X750, and once I realized it was quite easy, you do have to be careful, but the Gen Hao's are really hardy. Um, uh, what am I trying to say? I had this problem yesterday. Uh, feeds. The feeds on the Gen Hao X750s are quite hardy. You can really, you can really pull on them with section pliers, even and nothing happens. So, but that's not the case with the, this. So, I'll have to be very careful. Okay, and then this is the lovely um, white and rose gold that I just love. I what I love the best about this. Um, and I did get a stub nib on this one. I, I'm loving the stub on the purple, and so I got a stub. These two are broad, the yellow and the transparent blue. So um, I started a sentence, didn't I? Oh, what I love the best about this pen is that, in my view, it's going to be so neutral and I can put any color in it. Uh, you know, as, as I've said several times, I like I wouldn't want green and a blue pen. I'm just funny that way. Um, 
And then this one is the one I got last year, which is the transparent purple, and purple's my favorite color, but blue competes with that, so I did end up with one each of them. And uh, this has the stub nib on it too. And I just put Twisby, uh, Twisby Royal Purple in it this morning. <clears throat> I love that ink, and I just wanted to see this pen in use, so it's got the 1.1 stub. So there, that is where we're at now. Now that brings us up to a total of 49 pens that we've talked about. So we're almost halfway because there are at least 51 more to talk about. So that will be the next video. I'll, I will come back and um, show you the, and I'm not going to call them stragglers because there's some of my favorite pens in there, but uh, I thought doing the Gen House, then the Lamy's and the Twisby's would make sense because then we will start looking at the more unique ones. Now, I will say that I'm not sure one more part will cover it. It might. I'm not sure yet. So it, it may have to be two parts because when I look at it, if it seems to be two pen cases full, um, those Monteverde, then I'm definitely going to have to break it up. But I'll let you know when the time comes. And um, meanwhile, I, thank you so much for all the feedback on the first um, video. Uh, it seems that quite a few people are interested in doing that inventory on Google Docs and it is so easy and fun to do. And I think it's really part of my mindful year and what started out and is still very much in my mind about going deep with what I have. Um, it's just that I knew realistically that I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to pull off a no buy year unless there was an absolute need to. And at the time, there wasn't. Right, right now, in this moment of time, I'm feeling very much like conserving resources and not spending any money that I don't have to because there will be, you know, economic consequences for everybody of what's happening and I want to be prepared. But uh, mindfully, this is really neat to get your whole collection out. Um, kind of wish I could do just one video with all of them and that may be possible later, but because I wanted to get a little chatty, I didn't think I could do that. So I think I've covered everything. Um, the one thing I did want to say was in the, the thing in common about all of these pens, the Twisbees and Lamy's, I have yet to try the extra fine Lamy nib and I've yet to try the extra fine Twisby nib. And that stood out to me as I was going through all of this because I've been um, really good at everything except for I also haven't tried stubs up above the 1.1 and that's on my wish list you know long term list not no hurry or anything but I think that would be fun so as I go through here I'm also making a list of um I don't know if it makes sense to set that there but I'm making a list of the things things to do things that are to do and and that are going to be great fun with with these and uh, I noticed, I mean, the first fill for the yellow pen that just came in, that's going to be fun. I think I'll settle on the Golden Gazette. And then um, lots of other things like switching out that nib or, you know, maybe even <laughs> trying to watch some videos. I'd like to be extremely careful. I sure don't want to harm a, a feed um, or a nib for that matter. And then I'm going to continue. I've got just a few more pens to log into my inventory. So I think that's it for this video. But keep those comments coming. I think this is fun. And I'm glad to know I'm not the only one kind of taking a stock, you know, from the ground up and inventorying. And, um, you know, I'm looking up. In the case of these pens that I showed you today, there was only one. And that's this one. This one I won in an Instagram um, drawing. And all the other pens were either uh, purchased by me or um, manual, you know, for me for either a birthday or Christmas. So that's it. And I'm sure happy you stopped by. I hope you're having a great Sunday or whatever day it is that you're watching this. And I'll see you on the next video, uh, part three. Uh, that's going to be a lot different pens and maybe even some that will be really super interesting and not every day. So I'll see you on that and that and have a great rest of your weekend or day. Bye for now.